Breaking news, President Biden is set to talk about the disaster on Maui in one hour from now. We're going to bring you his comments live when they happen on air and online. We can also tell you that the White House is having, quote, active conversations about when the president can visit the Valley Isle. The president has been in touch with local leaders since the disaster broke out. We want to head out to Steve. He is live this morning in Wailuku, continuing our disaster coverage from Maui. Steve. Yeah, Grace, it, it really is startling when you hear somebody who's lost so much express to you that they're amongst the fortunate ones. And yet we're seeing so much of that with this fire. So many of these displaced residents know that there are others that are so much more worse off. Uh, coming up in just a little bit, you're going to hear from a Lahaina man who's dealing with that as he's struggling also to get back into West Maui. But for now, let's hand things over to Guy Hockey. Guy? Thanks a lot, Steve. Uh, we can see that the weather on Maui is looking pretty good. However, there will be a couple of changes that we want to tell everybody about. First of all, Tropical Storm Greg is going to pass by to the south of the island. And as it does, it's going to increase the trade winds, act like a vortex. But the winds aren't going to be that strong because it's going to be a much weaker system than Dora was. And then behind that, we're tracking uh, trop uh, Hurricane Fernanda, expected to be very weak at that point, coming into the state between Sunday and Monday. That's going to increase the rainfall. At this point, it looks like Hawaii Island is going to get most of the rain Monday morning, and then we'll see uh, adequate amounts of showers for the rest of the state. Although we're not real sure on how much rain is coming, it looks like a sure thing that we will see increasing showers. So if you're on Maui helping with the recovery effort, just plan for some wet weather between Sunday and Monday. Otherwise, we're in for some uh, pretty dry conditions. Now let's check on traffic again. Lacey, what you got? And Guy, here's the latest from Maui County officials. The access into West Maui for area residents, that is through Kahakuloa, and then you will exit out of Ma'alaya. And for the entrance into West Maui from Ma'alaya, that is reserved only for pre-approved first responders, medical, utility, county, supply and transport, and volunteer personnel. And this is the latest update from Maui County officials. Back here on O'ahu, that's several slowdowns. Let's take you out toward the west on the H1, where things are backed up before Kunia, slow going as you make your way into Aiea. Typical buildup through Halava on Moanalua Freeway. Later, over on the H1 viaduct, that all changes in town. We got a backlog at the Middle Street merge that's now reaching out toward the Punoho exit. And the drive in from the east, slow going before Cocohead, but not too bad from Windward Oahu. Grace, back over to you. All right, heart wrenching accounts from Governor Josh Green this morning who confirmed recovery efforts have found children among the Lahaina fire victims. When the bodies are smaller, we know it's a child. Uh, there was a car we know, for example, that had four people in it. It was obviously a family of four and two children in the back seat. Uh, so we see some of these settings where, or it's a, a group of seven people in a house and you know when it's children. Uh, it's one of the reasons that we are humbly asking for p some patients about going into the ground zero area because some of the sites are too much to share or see from just a human perspective and also we don't want to disrupt any of the recovery. Maui police say they have only managed to identify a few of the confirmed 99 deaths thus far using fingerprints. Families of confirmed victims will begin being notified as soon as today. Authorities say that they have arrested a 40-year-old man from Waehu for trespassing in Lahaina. Police say Honor Letourneau allegedly entered the town around midnight on Sunday, despite the mayor's emergency proclamation declaring that town off-limits. He's also accused of gun and drug charges. He posted bail. Now, officials have been strongly urging people to stay out of Lahaina because of safety concerns and out of respect for the dead. The conditions at Lahaina Town as an impact zone is very dangerous, it's very hazardous, and worse, it, it, we don't even know some of the hazards that are there yet. They haven't been measured. So anyone deciding to go there takes the, will take in toxic chemicals and other sorts of uh, things that you don't need to be breathing. The last thing we want to do is have any loss of life for anyone else because their curiosity outweighs their judgment. Meantime, Hawaiian Electric says that power has been restored to all but 2,000 of the 12,400 customers who lost power in West Maui. Lahaina Civic Center now has power. 
400 HECO employees from across the state are still working to restore it. Officials said about 400 of 750 power poles in West Maui have been damaged or destroyed. Additionally, more than 300 transformers need major repairs. I want to go back out live to Maui, where Steve is continuing our team coverage and has been speaking with victims there. Steve? Yeah, yeah. In fact, Grace, we were right here along the road yesterday when the man in the truck stopped to ask us a couple of questions about the placard system, which has now been scrapped. But I asked him if he wanted to talk. He pulled over and we had a chat. Here he is. How anxious are you to get back into Lahaina? Bah. I guess. I just like go help, uh, you know. Yeah. I'm from Oahu, but I've been here 10 years with my family. My wife's family is from born and raised Lahaina. Okay. Everybody I know since I've been here for a decade, I just like go home to my nephews and to all the family that helped me. I like help them, man. What was it like that day uh, when you were driving out, maybe even the whole thing when it started to escalate? Well, we went, the winds was blowing our cars, my kids, I get four daughters, and they were scared already, so imagine if we were stuck in there yeah, with my kids. But it was windy, we were stuck right by um, Lahaina Gateway, by Safeway, and trees and the lions, was, we thought that the lions was gonna break and come out to our cars and stuff. With our kids, we was ready for ditch our cars, but good thing that we went out early, early enough to grab supplies and then got stuck at Ma'alaya for six hours. Do you know yet what you've lost? Um, me, I just, my house is okay. But my sister-in-law's house was burned down. They live in Kahoma. Um, my friend them's house, they, all, they live in Luna Road. It's all gone. At least 20 plus friends I know all gone already. Everything. So trying to get home to them to help them, man, you know, any way I can. Because I feel bad because my house is still there, you know. So get people that no more house, they stay at my house right now. Well, we're not there. That is Ladley. He is a Lahaina resident. Now, earlier, I we use the word guilt, and, and, and I don't think that's the right word. Maybe it's a, the, the sense of responsibility, but you, you hear that a lot with these Lahaina residents that have been displaced and, and talking about what they want to do, knowing that other people have lost lives, they've lost more property. And, and, and it seems to see, that's why we see so many community uh, groups coming together. We, we see so many donations being made. It's the people of Maui, it's the people of Hawaii saying that they can't just stand by and watch. Grace? Steve, with families losing so much, are you surprised to see so many of them who still have a sense of hope? Yeah, right. I, I, and we talked to that other gentleman, Bruce, who is almost sure, based off of helicopter video that he's seen of the area, that his house is completely wiped out. And, and there's, there's hope in a couple of senses, right? Some people, they haven't had confirmation, so perhaps they go back in and there's a, a, a pleasant surprise that they still have a house standing. But there's also hope in knowing, hey, things could have been worse, which is easy for us to say, right? It's, it's that much more impactful when somebody who's already lost so much is saying it, uh, knowing that they still have their lives, they still have their family, and knowing again, there are others that are worse off that, that are dealing with that kind of grief, and knowing that because of where they are emotionally, they have a responsibility in a sense to go and help others that need it. Yeah, we appreciate them sharing their stories. I right, see, we'll check oh, yeah. back in with you in just a little bit. Thank you.